Hello, Hi. welcome to church. My name is Phil. My name is Kira. And it's Sunday, Woo. which means we want to get you ready for church in the pre-show. Yes, that's what we're doing here. This is what this little, little bit is, um, where we're funny, try to be funny. I don't try, I'm hilarious. I try really hard to be funny. I don't have to, I just am. You're just normally funny, yeah. that's good. Then we expect you to bring the humour today. The pressure is real. We yeah. normally start our pre-show with a question, and today's question is actually related to what Sunday is. It's Summit Sunday, which is a Sunday uh, themed and focused all around Global Leadership Summit, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Our question, which we want you to answer, which we will answer, is, what is the question? Do you see yourself as a leader. Do you see yourself as a leader? See, I forgot the question. That's, that the right question. I think that's the question. Do you see yourself as a leader? And we want you to comment on that. Um, and why don't you, you know, add more information around that? Don't just say yes or no. Yeah. We want to know. We like, want to have a, a conversation. Or yeah, why? What places have you been in situations where you're like, great, I'm, I'm yeah. leading. I can do it. And hey, comment if someone has commented. Just be welcoming and interactive generally. We're here at Friendly Church Online. Guys. Yeah, exactly. So do you want to answer that question? Do you see yourself as a leader? I'll answer the question. I do see myself as a leader, mostly because I've had opportunities to, to lead within the church, but also outside of the church. And I think if you'd asked me this question like last year, I would have said, no, thank you. I'll I'll follow. I won't lead. Like it, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. But I then got presented with opportunities where I could do that. Yeah. And I've grown a lot in myself. And so now I'm definitely like, yeah, I'm a leader. I can go out. I can do things. I can lead a team in a way that's, you know, not. I don't have a word, but I can do it. I can do it well. Yes. And like happily. 
You like, can I'm, do it. Well. I'm not. I'm not stressed. I can confirm. You can. You're a good leader. Thank you very much. What about you? Do you see yourself as a leader? I do, and I see myself as an unnatural leader, mm. and I really enjoy that phrase. I've always considered myself to be, you know, someone who wants to know Jesus, mm -hmm. and that drive has always led me to a place where I, I want to uh, uh, help other people experience that yeah. as well. And therefore, I've always put my hand up, I always want to do stuff, I want to help people arrive in that place. And so because of that hunger, I've always been in a place where leadership uh, makes sense awkwardly for me, you know. Yeah. I uh, I love empowering people. I love letting uh, people have space to grow, mm. and so as a leader, you get to you get to do those things, yes. and it's really nice to be like, oh, I loved doing this, and I'm like, yeah, well, you, you could do that more, um, and you're creating that space for people is fun, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely. You get to empower people. Yeah. I can be like, you actually are a leader. Yeah. I'm going to help you do that. It's great. You're also a good leader. Thank you. Way. You're welcome. <laughs> do let us know what you feel about that question, and I'm sure that people are going to have strong responses. It is a, one of those questions where people are not like, uh, it, it's probably yes or no. Yeah. Maybe you are in the, the middle. Um, so this Sunday is Summit Sunday. Yes. And I do know what's going on this week because we filled a promo before with Steve and Angie and Steve will be talking on Genesis 1 and he didn't really want to give too many things away about why that verse because it's very beginning of the yeah. Bible. You're like, this is how it starts. Yeah, Great. where's the leadership in that? Yeah. But um, he's excited about his word and then Angie will be around uh, knitting some of the parts together and there's a few powerful videos. I watched one of the videos and it was quite moving. So I really hope that you enjoy Summit Sunday. And as we head into the service, should I pray? I think you should, that'd be great. I knew that answer it's was gonna be. the true leader that you are, Phil, you can you pray, pray for I us. gave you the opportunity for you to be like, no. No, I'm okay. <laughs> Let me pray. Jesus, we are here for you today. We want to know you. We welcome you into the places where we're watching church online, where we're gathering as family. Jesus, we invite you into our heart and mind. May we place the things that have been distracting us, been uh, taking our attention to one side so that we can focus on you. And even better, lift those things that are heavy on our hearts to you because we are desperate for your word, your touch, your healing, your momentum in our life. As we talk about leadership, how we could lead others, inspire us, move us as we seek you today in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Have a good Sunday. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.
with praise. He's called to praise. Cause he is greatly, he is greatly to be praised. To be praised. Come on, sing enter in. Enter in. He's caught with praise. He's caught with praise. For he is greatly, he is greatly to be praised. What shall we do? What shall we do? We shall lift up a shout. What shall we do? We shall praise Him. What shall we do for our God made a way? We'll give Him our thanksgiving. Yeah. Magnify. Magnify. His holy name. His holy name. For He is greatly. Yes, He is greatly. We're gonna drown them out with a louder shout of praise. Even if the battles roar, we're gonna praise you, Lord, for you are always worthy. Even when the rocks cry out, we're gonna drown them out with a louder shout of praise. Even when the battles roar, we're gonna praise you, Lord.
Father, come and have your way in our hearts, you deliver. Come and do what only you can do, Father. 
You said in your word that you are here to bring life. So Father, we pray life over every circumstance. Life over every circumstance, every situation. Come and move in power. this room today you've come seeking God I I believe that but let me tell you God is seeking you he's waiting for you and 1 Peter 5 7 says this cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you 
cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Our God is not only loving, merciful, compassionate, he's thoughtful. He knows your heart. He knows your anxieties. He knows your difficulties, the circumstances you're facing. And right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a moment to lay down our current circumstances and to remember all that Jesus has done for us. And so we're gonna take communion together. And so if you haven't got a cup, there should be one on the seat behind you. If you haven't got one, just raise your hand. The amazing Connect team will come around and bring you a cup wherever you are in the room. But you see, communion is an opportunity for us to remember Jesus. An opportunity for us to hold our hope in our hands. I encourage you, if you have a communion cup with you, why don't you hold it up as a sign to heaven that you're expectant. Because this is our cup of hope. Both for our anxieties in this earth right now, because he is a good shepherd, he cares for you cast your anxieties upon him but also of our coming life in eternity with Jesus that we believe we will not die but we will have everlasting life because of Jesus and so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into a song of worship and I want you to remember Jesus remember what he's done for you and reflect on all those ways that we are grateful for that price he paid on the cross so that we could have everlasting life life. Amen. Let's worship.
your kingdom come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you will dwell in us. We thank you that your spirit is with us. We thank you, Lord, that we are made holy by your sacrifice, that it is not by our works that we are acceptable to you. And it's because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. And so, Father, as we continue in worship today, as we continue to open our hearts to you, to hear what you have to say, to be inspired and encouraged. Lord, I pray that you will meet us all where we are at. In your name we pray, amen. We have been singing about how we are the dwelling place for God. He has made us holy. We are acceptable to Him through the sacrifice of Jesus. And in response to that, in Psalm 91, it says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because of Jesus, we are the dwelling place for the Holy Spirit, but we also dwell under His protection. And so as the prayer wall goes up, as we look at the prayer requests of our friends and family here at C3 Church, what we see before us is people crying out in times of uncertainty, waiting for decisions to be made, seeking counsel, answers to prayer, miracles. And my encouragement to you as we pray for our brothers and sisters is that we dwell, dwell in the shadow of God, dwell in the comfort that even when we are unsure, even when we are trying to figure out what to do with our lives, even when we are seeking healing, even when we are surrounded by the unknown, we are also surrounded by the love of Jesus, the comfort that the Father brings. Nothing on earth is like the peace that comes when we are in relationship with God. He does not promise that life will be straightforward and easy and fun all the time, but He does promise that He will be on the journey with us. So Father God, we lift these prayers before You. We pray for opportunities for education that is necessary for a good life for this little boy. We pray, Lord God, for doors to open as decisions are being made. We pray for healing, Lord God. You are a God that heals and we declare that in Jesus' name. We thank you for the testimonies that will come because of the trust that we have in you for healing, Lord. And we pray that you surpass our understanding in the way that you will work in the lives reflected on the screen, but also the lives in front of me today, the lives that are joining us online. We thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome to church, everybody. It's great to see you. Feel free to take your seats if you're in the room. If you're joining us online, it's always so wonderful to have you with us. Whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world, make sure you say hello in the comments so that we can connect with you. Say hello to somebody around you if you're in the room, um, because it's always nice to get connected. (laughs) There you go. That's the chat that I'm looking for. And if you're online, say hello to somebody online or in the room with you. Um, I had a brief discussion with our team this morning about uh, whether or not it's autumn. The rain last night, in my opinion, says autumn, but some people are still hankering for a bit of summer. But regardless of um, what season it is, we know that there is always so many exciting things happening here in the life of C3. And one of the things that we do in our services every week is we take a moment for an offering. This is an opportunity for you to become a part of developing and building the kingdom of God. Ways to give are on the screen behind me and our wonderful Connect team are available if you would like to give in the form of cash or if you would like to start a standing order. So if you just wanna raise your hand if you need an envelope. But the reason that we do this is because we believe that investing in the kingdom of God and participating in the work that we do as a church for not just in the church, but the community around us is how we show the love of Jesus. Now on the 6th of October, we have got our next vision offering. And so if you call 
for C3 Church, your home, we would love you to prayerfully consider how you would like to invest into our next vision offering. And what we're gonna do over the next few weeks is show you some of the amazing ways that we've been able to really impact the community around us and, and the global church um, and our local church. So have a look at the C3 News to see what's coming up, but also pay attention to see how C3 Impact in particular has been blessed by your generosity. Welcome to Life at C3. Here's what's happening in our church. Our heart is to make sure that our C3 family is directed to events, ministries, and community updates. On the 18th of September, it's our final table event for the year. We are so excited to celebrate the great things that have happened here at C3 over the last year, and we look forward to the next season. This will be a sit-down meal for each of our locations and spots are limited. If you have not been part of the table before and would like to get involved, head to Next Steps or chat with your location pastors. We have a new Christmas production for Oh What Wonder this year and we would love you to be involved. Auditions for cast are taking place at the C3 Centre in Cambridge. All the details on cast options and commitments can be found at myc3.life forward slash Christmas cast. Take a second. To think, if you could design your future, what would it look like? If you could design a tomorrow where you are no longer stuck, drained, overlooked, what would that feel like? Your ability to raise the lid of your leadership, to go from chaos to clarity, to bring tomorrow to life, is multiplied when you are equipped. The Global Leadership Summit is where leaders gather to learn more from each other, to build accountability, to be equipped to handle the leadership challenges of tomorrow. It's more than an event. It's a community where greatness is forged. Take a second, then take a step that equips you to design your tomorrow. Register for the Global Leadership Summit today. C3 family, we have coming up very soon our final vision offering for 2024. In a few moments, you're going to hear from a number of the team who are going to share where we sense God has guided us where to invest this in this next season. Take a listen to this. Hey everybody, Kara here from Impact at the Cambridge location. Just wanted to give you a bit of an update on our new community shop. For Community Market, we used to pull out tons of tables and cloths and crates of food and haul them back and forth twice a week, every week, to build a market experience for our guests and serve our community. Now, we've got a kitted out store with a freezer to make ready-make meals and give them to families. We also have a fridge so that we can have fresh goods. And we've got a massive storehouse. We believe that God is going to bless us. We've seen him do it over and over again. And so we wanted to have a space where we could grow into that. And now with the storehouse, we have that. This space has created an honorable experience for so many in our community who otherwise in life haven't had the same experience. And this is what we see in the gospels when so many encounter Jesus every single day in the situations they were in. Our new community shop is a gift for all of these members and will be for so many more that we know God will bring through the doors. We'd love to pray with you right now and pray together for us as people that we will hear God's heart for what he wants us to bring, what he wants us to give. I love these verses from 1 Chronicles when David was gathering the goods for the uh, building of the temple. It says here in 1 Chronicles 29, Lord our God, all this abundance that we've provided for building your temple in your holy name comes from your hand and all of it belongs to you. I know my God that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things I've given willingly and with honest intent. And now I've seen with joy how willingly your people are here that they have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. That is our prayer, that as we gather together all the resources that God has given to us, we give them back to him so that we build something that is a testimony to his name, a witness for his glory here on the earth. 
We'll be praying that God speaks to each and every one of us what he wants us to bring. We're deeply grateful for our partnership in this kingdom endeavor. Do pray what you should give as a member of the C3 family, October 6th, Vision Offering 2024. To stay up to date with everything happening at the C3 Church, follow us on social media and sign up to our Life at C3 emails for more details. It is going to be a really exciting season. And even though I'm extremely passionate about autumn in particular, I am even more so about Christmas. Um, We are beginning all of our Christmas prep already. We're going to be ready to be able to take the message of Christmas to the whole of Cambridge, to Bury, to Colchester, online and beyond. And so if you want to be a part of that, we strongly encourage you to join Team Christmas. And if you have a flair for the dramatic, make sure that you come to our Christmas auditions. They are open for everybody from the age of six and up. We do not want you to miss the chance to participate in such an amazing, amazing experience of showing the love of Jesus to so many people. You can find all the information at Life at C3 through this QR code, or you can head to your next steps to find out more. Sound good? great. (laughs) Today is Summit Sunday. It's an opportunity for us to share some real inspiration and excitement around the Global Leadership Summit, which is happening in October here at the C3 Church in Cambridge um, on the 10th, on the 10th of October. So it's coming up soon and Pastor Steve is going to be sharing some amazing vision around GLS and um, GLN, the Global Leadership Network. But before we welcome Pastor Steve on stage, we have a really amazing GLS video for you to see. So take a look and enjoy. Rajan Glavash was a communications expert, an ethics professor, and a consultant, and he brought the GLS to Croatia uh, in the early 2010s. He was of the generation that was just becoming adults when communism collapsed, and there was so much opportunity and yet challenges in that moment. As far as leadership is concerned, Croatia has a huge crisis of leadership. The big leaders that have led the country have disappointed the people. So now there's almost this idea that to be a leader means to be corrupt, to be negative, or to be wielding too much power. People in Croatia can't really find meaning and purpose in what they do every day. But Drajan challenged us to think of ourselves as leaders wherever we are, because we as human beings have influence, we influence each other. Drajan was all about building people, not, not building places. Places can be sold off, run down people would last. We believe the Global Leadership Summit can play a crucial role in forming the future leaders of Croatia, which in turn will change the whole future for our country. So the summit is presented by the Global Leadership Network with the hope of inspiring and equipping leaders to bring about positive change right where they are. And their end goal is that more people will lead well and use their influence to bring about positive change. So the first GLS was 2012. Drajan handpicked people to come there. People that maybe he couldn't have invited to another event, he could invite to this. He wanted every area of society. So you have politicians, you had artists, you had business people, you had uh, ministry people, you had pastors, priests. He wanted to create this kind of unified identity as We are Croatians who care about our culture and our society and where it's going. GLS uh, changed me in my business environment Uh, because in in Croatia we are doing business more like you can you do it just for the payment and you can you can go home. But after GLS I realized that it's so much more that we we are doing our business really for the people. The implementation started to change me. And every time when I changed something, I saw the positive outcome of it in my personal life, but also in the lives of others who was learning from me. So Drajan led the GLS in Croatia for six years and then passed away suddenly about a month after the last GLS that he led. 
Uh, it was a huge shock. He was only 49 years old. He left behind a widow and three teenage sons. I was the one who had the time to be able to say, I can step in and be the coordinator for this in Croatia. GLS is a huge production and uh, Drajan, he put everything into it every year. When he saw people that hadn't ever met talking together about truth, about integrity, and about how do you lead a business, and these are my problems at work. When he saw that every year, he said, we're doing this again. Well, Croatia is a small country, so when we're already gathering five or 600 leaders in Zagreb just around GLS, it's making a difference. It's connecting people in a way that's very different from other leadership conferences or experiences. One thing I'm passionate about, to really uh, invite people to GLS who are not uh, sure what they are doing, why they are doing it, to hear about business, but also then to hear that uh, Jesus really loves them and that God has a plan for them. I think the GLS is extremely important for young people. I think there might be a notion sometimes that uh, people think, oh, I can watch a video on my phone because we have a lot of YouTube videos and TikTok videos. Actually attending the GLS summit and hearing those specific things in that context and being surrounded by other people who want to grow as leaders, I think that's just an amazing experience. So I truly believe that our society will contribute and move away from the past by bringing together the business sector, people from nonprofits, and people from churches together and on one platform and use GLS in order to uh, learn, be better, be more focused for the impact we want to make together. I am so thankful to God for Drajan and how he always wanted to uh, involve us as crew. So I think it would bring a big smile onto his face. If you think in your country that it can't be done because it's too messed up, I can guarantee you that's exactly how people felt in Croatia 20 or 30 years ago. And yet one person with enough drive and passion and faith like Drajan had, combined with the quality of what is in the GLS, you can bring change in any place and culture in the world. Well, welcome to all our locations, Colchester, Bury St. Edmunds, anybody online, you're glad to have you. The prisons that are watching today as well, uh, for the microsite, welcome to you and everyone in the room here. Now today I have one simple goal. I want every single one of you to book in for the Global Leadership Summit here in Cambridge. That's my simple goal. So if everyone doesn't, I'm going to be disappointed. That's my goal for today. But I want to start by looking at the Word of God and by looking at a question that I want to ask you, and I'm going to ask you to turn to the person next to you, or if you're online, to chat in there, on, on the chat there. I just want to ask you this question. And turn to the person next to you and discuss it, maybe in threes, left and right. You've got one minute. Is God a leader? Is God a leader? One minute, discuss. Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, answer. Now, thank you. I'm hearing some yeses in the room. I hope you've agreed in the other locations. Clearly, God is the ultimate leader, and Jesus is the masterful example of what leadership is. The Word of God tells us, we're going to read some scriptures, that God is a leader. He's a leader. Now, the way we understand leadership 
may need to be refined and redefined in relation to a worldly concept. We may need to go back to the Word of God, but God is a leader. Listen to this, Psalm 23. You know this one so well. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Psalm 25, verse 9, says this. He leads the humble in what is right. Psalm 24, verse 4 and 5, says, lead me in your truth and teach me. Just in case you think it's only an Old Testament concept where God is a leader, listen to this, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphant procession. John 8 verse 12, again Jesus spoke to them saying this, I am the light of the world, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. I think it was John Maxwell who coined this phrase, he that thinketh he leadeth and hath no one following is only out for a walk. <laughs> Jesus had followers. In fact, today, there are 2.4 billion followers in the world of Jesus Christ. Hip hip. That figure demanded a better response than you gave. 2.4 billion people who claim to follow Jesus. In the New Testament, the word that is used the most in relation to Jesus is the word Lord. That's the most frequently used description of Jesus Christ. We don't use that very often in our day, but the reality is that word really is boss, leader. One dictionary defines it as this, about being Lord. It says one, I've lost it, where is it? One possessing authority, power, and control. Authority, power, and control. And those three words can send a shiver down your spine, a shiver, a shiver down your spine, when you know people who've wrongly exerted power or control or contained authority. But Jesus is the consummate example. So we all agree, God is a leader. Here's my point. If God is a leader, then so are you. Then so are you. And some of you inside, you're going, no, and I've got to devote the whole of the time to, I've got left to convince you it's true. You are a leader. Let me read to you why I believe this. This is right in the beginning. This is the why. This is Genesis chapter 1, verse 22 and verse 26 and 28. Then God said, we have a speaking God. Let us, God is a community, us, make man in our image. Humanity is the word. Let us make humanity in our image and likeness. And let them have, his a leadership word, dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created humanity in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. Who's blessed? 50% of us were blessed and God said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it leadership language and have dominion we know it's been used wrongly but it gets used right with God and dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth this is why I know you're a leader because you are made in the image and likeness of God you have never set eyes on someone, whatever their education, whatever their color, whatever their socioeconomic economic position. You've never set eyes on someone who isn't made in the image and likeness of God. As I look up this room today, as I imagine the millions watching online, as I imagine you in Colchester and Bury St. Edmunds and Fordham, you are made in the image and likeness of God. Which is why we respect and honor everyone, because it's a level playing field. We're all made. And just because humanity fell, if you can, I don't want to spoil the, like, the story, but I think you know it, people fell. But God didn't take back 
the image from the person. He didn't say, now you're fallen, now you're a sinner. I'm taking back my image and likeness. No, it still stands. You're still made in the image and likeness of God. And as his image bearers, we are to continue under him. So any authority that we have is only ever delegated authority. But we continue under him as those who are his representatives on the earth. The image bearers. I'm going to go as far as to say this. Your purpose, Adiola. My purpose. Stefan, your purpose. Looking across the room, my purpose. I go as far as to say it's this. This is our purpose. And my purpose in life is to lead your world as God's vice regents. Vice regents just means deputy. As God's deputy kings and queens who rule, we are, to, this is Peter, we are a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation belonging to God. Genesis 2, 15 says this, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden, this is what it says, to work and keep it. That's a ruling role to tend and keep it. If you're a gardener, by the way, you're acting like God. God had a garden and he decided he wanted to be kept and he chose humanity to do it. Now it's expanded from there. Listen to Psalm 8. I've got so many scriptures today because this is the Bible. Yet you have been made a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with, this is speaking of humanity, crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and all the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven. It's just saying what Genesis 1 said. Psalm 8. And have you ever noticed this? That when God finished creation, it's like he stood back. I remember at the end of each day, he says, good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Then at the end, day six, he didn't make the world in seven days, by the way, he did it in six. And he stood back and he says, very good, very good. Do you notice what he didn't say? He didn't say, ah, perfect. Hello? Ah, perfect. Why did God not say perfect? Because in creating us, he chose to involve us in the ongoing work of creating order and beauty, of invention and intervention. Innovation. He chose us to be involved in the ongoing creative act. So we can, in a sense, perfect that which is very good. Hmm. Cleaning. Who likes cleaning? Don't be ashamed. It's a good thing. Last weekend, our daughter and son-in-law moved into their new house in London. London town. My goodness, the house was filthy. Not, not my daughter's house, the one she was moving into. The grime on the windows. You couldn't, anyone ever clean a window and stand back and say, ah, very good. <laughs> I feel like I've entered into some creative act when I clean my windows. Now, my wife will tell you we don't clean them often enough, but nevertheless, and we were cleaning away, and, and I was cleaning, my wife spent the whole day on a kitchen. She was, it was filthy. And I just said this to my, my daughters, we were cleaning together. I said, as Jeremiah 3 verse 7 says, cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> and she said to me, does it? <laughs> and in case some of you are looking up Jeremiah 3 verse 7 now, it, it's all right, Sarah, it doesn't. It doesn't say that. But somehow I feel when I'm cleaning, I'm bringing order out of chaos and it feels a little bit godlike. Some of you aren't convinced, but there we go. It was actually John Wesley who invented that phrase, by the way, cleanliness is next to godliness. So I discovered, because I went and checked it up afterwards, and he was probably talking about 
the cleansing that goes in the Bible because there's a lot of cleansing processes in the Old and even in the New Testament. This is one author. If I was to recommend a book to you on eschatology, it's a study of the end times, it's this one. It's called Reclaiming Biblical Eschatology, Eschatology, A New Heaven and a New Earth. It's absolutely brilliant. It's really hard to read, but it's good. So you want to, that's the best book I've ever read. And this is what he says, this. Creation was not perfect in the sense that it could not be made better. In the Bible, the pristine world that God made is open to improvement by the exercise of human cultural power, a calling granted humans on creation. See, the theological term the theologians use about us being made in the image and likeness of God is imagio Dei. It means literally we're made in the image and like we represent him wherever we go. And this, this definition there that I just read about God's pristine world, that we can improve it with cultural power, is defined by theologians as the cultural mandate. That's the mandate that's been given and never taken back to all of humanity. Our role is still to do this. Now, I've often heard it said this, oh, no, no, our purpose of our lives is to worship God. Sounds right, doesn't it? Well, it might be. When someone says to me, our purpose in life is to worship God, my answer to that is maybe. But maybe it depends how you define worship. Because when we say worship, and this is in our language all the time, I use it, we're not going to change it now, so I'm just going to live it with it. But when we say worship, we automatically think of this. We have a worship evening. So we're going to sing songs, we're going to engage with God, and we're going to feel stuff emotionally. Emotions are good, all right? So I'm not complaining about that. But we tend to think it's some kind of emotional, verbal, and often musical expression when we worship. It is, but that's not all there is. If you think that's all worship, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> If heaven and the new heaven, the new heaven is just about singing songs, I don't want to go. <laughs> I like singing songs, but I'm bored after four. <laughs> now, maybe God will give me more help. I know some of you think it's, this is real now, heresy. I don't want to go to a place where I just sing songs forever. I want to go somewhere where I'll sing some songs for some of the time. I want to have a song in my heart that will come out while I'm doing... But if you think heaven... It's just about singing songs and maybe drinking bad coffee out of styrofoam cups. You've got a wrong impression of heaven. <laughs> it was Matt Redman I remember hearing years ago. He was a great songwriter. He said people would always come up to him and say to him, this song, God gave it me. Now that's really hard to know what to do if someone comes and says to you, God gave me this song. So Matt Redman would listen to the song, and he said, after I listened to it, he says, I, I now know why, why God gave you that song. <laughs> he didn't want it. <laughs> he just didn't want it. So he gave it to you. Please, what I'm saying is this. Worship is so much more than a song. Oh, it includes the song. I love singing. Don't, please, we're not going to sing less. Let's sing more. But worship is so much more than singing. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your body as living sacrifices. Wherever I go, currently, my body goes with me. So wherever I am, my body's with me. This is what you're meant to do. Present your bodies as the living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. So in the New Testament, there's, no, there's none of this dualism where we think what we do here is holy, but what I do tomorrow morning, if I'm writing software, if I'm feeding sheep, or, or if I'm looking after my family, whatever the work you might do, or whatever place you bring order to, you think that, that's not holy. That's as holy when you're cooking at the stove is as holy as when you're lifting up holy hands. 
And too often we separate the two and think, no, this is holy. I'm holy because I'm a pastor. But I don't know what, what, what you're, I know what you do. You're a pilot. So you're not holy, are you? Oh, please be holy. I want someone who's flying my plane to be holy. Don't, don't you? I want them to do it as unto God. You know, doing your job just for money is never a big enough reason. Do it for God. Do it to worship. Doing your garden so as it looks nice, please, come round to my house. Oh, no, you don't need my sister's in. She does a great job at the moment, much better than me. She brings order to chaos. Don't think it's just, oh, I, I, it's subservient. I don't want to do it. No, no. You are acting like God. You're being in order to chaos. Thank God for accountants. Hip, hip. <laughs> we love them. Don't you ever think, you see, why do we get into this? We think people are up here singing songs. They're the creative ones. You're all creative. Because why? You're made in the image and likeness of God. You're made in the image. I'm not going to talk about creative accounting. It's okay. <laughs> read, 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 Psalm, read Psalm 148. Because you know what it says there? It doesn't say the human beings are the only people who worship. Rather, don't take the word people out. It doesn't say the human beings are the only ones that worship. Psalm 148 starts with this. Praise Yahweh. And then it lists those who can praise Yahweh. Angels, sun, moon, stars, and the water of the heavens. And then it continues on, once it's talked about the heavens, to talk about the earth below. And it says, this is what it says, you sea monsters, you deep oceans, you lightning hail, you snow and wind, mountains, trees, animals, birds, and finally human beings. It says, praise Yahweh. We've just been to Colorado. I went fishing in the river there. I tell you what, it was a, it was a temple. It was. It was, as, as I'm, I didn't catch any fish in the first place. I did in the second place. It was worship. It was the mountains. I couldn't hear them, and I didn't see any of them crying. But you know what? They were worshipping. God says the mountains praise Yahweh. How does a mountain praise Yahweh? By being a mountain. How does the sea monster, I think it might be a conger eel. How does a conger eel worship God? By being a conger eel. How do the stars worship? By being a star. How do human beings worship? By being fully human as God intended us to be. Oh, and it will include a song, but it includes your work. It includes wherever you go. Yet it will include emotional and verbal stuff, but it will include. Being a sound engineer, being a mum or a dad, being a chemist or a scientist. I'm not going to go through everything. Being a teacher or a TA. It's worship. It's holy as unto the Lord. Being a businessman. It's holy as unto the Lord. This is what I want to say to you. Lead your world. Because it's what you were meant to do. Wherever you are, lead your world. I said to someone yesterday, I said, I only discovered this this week. Keir Starmer, you know who he is, the Prime Minister? And me are the same age. We're both 34. <laughs> we're both 62. He's a little bit younger, but we're both 62. And I said to someone yesterday, do you know Keir Starmer and me are the same age? And they looked at me and they said, did you feel like a failure? <laughs> and I said, I certainly do not. Because somewhere I think Keir Starmer might be saying, I wish I was a pastor. I wish I could lead people in the things of God. Now, I'm, I'm exaggerating. I don't know that he does this. But I wouldn't want to lower myself to be prime minister when God's called me to be a pastor. Why would I do that? 
This is what God has enabled and called me to do. And don't you think, well, I want to be a prime minister if God's called you to be an environmentalist. Do it. Don't lower yourself to think, oh, there's something else. Be what you're meant to be and lead your world. If you work with those that are disadvantaged, don't say, well, oh, I could be prime minister. No, no, no. Work with the disadvantaged like God's giving. Go on, lead your world. I've got to go quick because my time has gone. But in Proverbs chapter 3, it says this of God, that he created the world by wisdom. Everyone say wisdom. wisdom. Understanding. Everyone say understanding. And knowledge. And in your small groups this week, you're going to discuss what is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And if you're not in a small group, you might never find out. <laughs> wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. It says God created the heavens through those three things. Then in Proverbs 24, it says this about humanity, mankind, building houses. And this is what it says in Proverbs 24, the verses are going up behind me. How are you to build a house? With wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That beautiful triad. In other words, what it's saying is, like a God builds and creates, when you are involved in work, and it might be building a house, you are engaging the same wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to build a house as it took God to build the earth. Because he's a builder, he's a creator. So when you're in your role tomorrow or later today, use wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And here's the good news. You can grow in those things. It says of Jesus, Luke 2, verse 52, that he grew in stature and wisdom. That's of Jesus. If Jesus could grow in wisdom, how much more us? And just getting older doesn't give you more wisdom, by the way. You have to learn from things in life. And some young people can be very wise. Sometimes we need to listen to them rather than just think, because I'm old, I need to listen to, you need to listen to me. No, we need to listen to one another. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Who wants to grow in those things? Then come to the GLS. <laughs> come to the Global Leadership Summit. Come, come as you are. You need more wisdom? Come to the Global Leadership Summit. It could change your life forever. Why would you not? You're a leader. Then come to it. It's for you. It's for you. This church is putting it on for you. Or oh, it's in the week. Take a day's holiday. Because you can grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You can do it. You can grow. You know, a few years ago, this is the reality for me, and then we'll end with a video. I was stuck. We're talking years back now. I was stuck in church leadership. I was going to all the conferences and hearing about small groups and getting prayer, shabba dabba dabba, and falling over, and it was great. We won all that. Fell over three times, so that's it. I've got it. And it just got harder. There was just things. The church was growing, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It was, but I'd been to all the Christian conferences, then I went to GLS. And I heard a non-Christian, because he's made in the image and likeness of God. And he doesn't know it. Oh, and by the way, I'm not saying that's all there is. We've got a great commission to fulfill, but that's another message. He doesn't know it, but because he's made in the image and likeness of God, and he's got wisdom through research, and he's got understanding and knowledge, he shared it with me, and I thought, oh, I could do that. A secular businessman. He spoke wisdom. Some people from the church said, what are you listening to a businessman for? And I said, because he's speaking more sense than a lot of pastors I know. And I'm going to make sure we do what he said, because I think it could work. And it did. And then a pastor got up and spoke at GLS, thank God. And he said some things as well. Craig Rochelle, anyone know Craig Rochelle? Yeah. He's nearly my age as well. He's the prettiest pastor you could ever hope to see. <laughs> oh, but, but you know what English people say to me? Americans in the room listening online, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But he's American. 
Hello? What does that mean? He's American. Doesn't God give revelation to Americans and South Africans and Kenyans and Nigerians and Welsh people? <laughs> okay, I took it too far with the Welsh, but you get my point. I'm being naughty today. Do you want to grow in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? Come to GLS. It really helped me, and it could really help you. I think for some of you, from my message, there's a stirring going on. I can do this. I can lead. Global Leadership Network is so much more than the Global Leadership Summit. There's a women's network that is global now that some of you could connect with globally. You say, why is it a women's network and not a men's? Because guys across the globe, in the UK, it's not a level playing field. And we need to cheer and support one another. And there's a women's network. There's a GLS Next Gen for younger leaders. This Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, we're at Colchester for the first, well done Colchester, with the headmistress there over the school staff. We're going to have 96 young leaders. And the headmistress went back to us. They're, they've got so excited putting together the GLS Next Gen program for the day. And these are young leaders, kids who can lead. And so they're going to be their first one this coming week. GLS Business is going to be launched. First one has to do with entrepreneurship. GLS Now, where, where, where again, every week, and this is carried on for three years, we have a program called Lead to Succeed in the prisons. I don't think I've put it up there, forgive me which a couple from the church here are heading up and doing all the filming. We still get reports back from those in prison. It's called Lead to Succeed on Way Out TV. It's one of the most popular programs that they have. They love it. Prisoners? Who can lead? Yeah, because some of you are there because you're leaders, but you've used the gift wrongly. But if they can use it right... And lead themselves. Prisoners, I'm talking to you. Then you can learn through GLS. It's called Lead to Succeed in the Prisons. Make sure you watch it. So I just want to say to you, I'm going to show you a video that's from GLN about the waters stirring, about a story in the Bible. And I want to ask you two things. What's the Holy Spirit stirring in you by way of where you've got to get up, stand up, and go and lead? And then the next question I've got is, why wouldn't you book in for GLS? Because the Holy Spirit, through me, is staring in your heart. I need to get involved. You've got this on your chair. You can see you can register today by going to that website, globalleadership.uk. If you put in at the end when you're booking out the C3 family, you get it cheaper than anybody else in the whole of the UK. No one else gets it this cheap. Just you. Ooh. Don't come on your own. Bring a friend. Yeah, you've got to invest a bit of money in it. But go to that. And at the end, we've got a stall as well that's going to be out there in Colmes. You can go and talk to Alex, who's there, and you can book in there and ask her. Or if you want to get involved, we need support. We need help. We need volunteers. Angie and I lead the Global Leadership Network UK for nothing. We don't get paid we do it because we believe in this. And our trustees and the team here have released us to spend time doing that because we believe our world needs better leaders. In Jesus' name. Watch this video. Thank you for your call. You are number 13,871 in the queue. Your expected waiting time is 38 years. We will attend to your call shortly. Please be patient. How do you feel about waiting? I'm sure we share the same frustration sitting in traffic, the long queue in the supermarket, the doctor's waiting room. Oh, software updates. Oof tech support. But what about that other kind of waiting, the longer one, 
the one where you cling onto a glimmer of hope, the possibility, the opportunity of a chance. The test that came back negative once again, the intervention that didn't work, the promotion missed once more, the disappointment of another no, another rejection, another failure, when giving up seems like the kinder choice. He was probably left there by his parents at the bath by Jerusalem's sheep gate called Bethesda to lie there on one of the five porches and wait. The water moved and the first one in was healed. Waiting, watching, praying with the other blind, crippled, disabled, paralyzed, the broken of society. Waiting, watching, praying, imploring the water to stir. Living with a hopeless hope. Maybe today, maybe today is my day. Maybe today I will get well too. Maybe today this hell will end. Do you remember how long he'd been waiting for? 38 years. It's half a lifetime. More than a generation. How long must 38 years of waiting feel? 38 years of hopeless. 38 years of disappointment, of waiting alone, because there was no one there to put him in the water when it moved. How does your waiting compare? Are you still waiting, hoping, watching, praying, begging for the water to move for you? Is there someone you can call to put you in the water when it moves? And then a stranger arrives, maybe asking the most obvious of questions. Do you want to get well? Do I want to? get well. I've been stuck here for 38 years. I'm always too late. Of course I, I want to, I, but I can't. This is the only way I know for a miracle to happen. I want to get to the water first when it moves, but I can't. And the stranger answers. Stand up, pick up your things, and walk. And the, wa the water moves, not out there, but in here. And he didn't even know his name was Jesus. No recipes, no formulas, just taking the risk to believe and obey. Are you waiting for the water outside to move for you? Are you anxious of not getting there first and missing out? What is holding you back from the risk of believing and obeying? I ask again, how do you feel about waiting? Hold on a little while longer. The water will move, but maybe not where you expect it to. So keep on waiting, keep on watching, keep on praying. Your invitation, stand up, will come. So, if I may ask, What are you waiting for? Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. What are you waiting for?
Come, Holy Spirit. And stir our hearts. I want to ask if there's any in the room here today. You've never given your life to Jesus. You feel a stirring right now. Something inside. And we want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. He's been watching over you. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdens, he says, and I will give you rest. We're going to pray a prayer. We're all going to pray it out loud. At the end of it, if you've prayed it for the first time, or maybe it's a recommitment, maybe the water's stirring in you to say, I want to recommit. I'm just going to ask you at the end to raise your hands and say yes to Jesus through this prayer. Come on, let's all pray it out loud and say this. Lord Jesus, I want you to lead me. Forgive me for leading myself, for my sin. I want to follow you. Forgive my past. Give me a new start. In your name I pray. Amen. So the heads bowed, eyes closed. You prayed that first time, a recommitment. Just raise your hand wherever you are. Some of the team are looking in order to give you one of these New Testaments. Anyone, anyone. Amen. Okay, just look up at me for one last moment. We're going to sing the song as we finish. We are so pleased to lead this community. You truly are amazing people. And we do not believe in a, a, a theology that's called dominionism, where the church will rule the world. We don't, we don't believe that. But we do believe you're the salt and light of the earth. And so you can influence wherever you go. And leaders influence. You can influence wherever you are as a child of God made in the image and likeness. Go on. Those waters that are stirring in you right now. Go on. You can do it. Book in for GLS because I really think it can aid you in your growth and your walk. We're going to have a prayer team that's down here. So I'm not going to come up again. If you need prayer at the end, then these will pray for you. We believe in a miracle working God. We have to hold this all together. We believe in a God who performs miracles. We want you to be part of the church. Get to know us. Go to our next step stand. Don't be on the edge. Come in. Come in. If you want steak for tea and coffee, there's free stuff in the marquee. You can buy stuff from Coldham's. And next week we start a brand new series, a teaching series. We're going to send a letter out to you on Friday about it with a little video to watch of me doing an interview with the guy who wrote the book that the series is based on. It's better than casualty or any other program that may be your choice. So watch that and get ready for next week. We love and appreciate you. Let's stand and let's sing a song of worship as we close. God.
I know time has gone and uh, I'll get in trouble for doing this but someone told me I'm the boss I just want to um, thank you for leading us today Shola and I want you to tell us in 30 60 seconds what happened to you a while back and you've been on team back again but just give test me the goodness of God in your life come on Amen praise God so the long story short, in March of 2022, I was diagnosed with um, amyloid cancer, it's blood cancer. Um, I had four rounds of intensive chemotherapy. I went into remission, the first chemo round. And two years later, I'm here, back, serving, leaving, lifting my hands, praising God. <laughs> God is good, amen. And I just want to say that, Partly to thank you, because you led us beautifully this morning. You are anointed. You are a leader. You used to be in nursing, but you stepped out. What do you do now? I'm a business She's a business analyst. A L- little bit like a nurse, but... <laughs> medical devices. Medical devices, there we go. Thank you for leading us. But this is what I want to say more than anything. Thank God that we serve a miracle working God. Who <laughs> heals and changes, and delivers, and does good. He's a healer. If you need prayer, there's a team here. We believe in miracles. And we're going to see more miracles as we come closer to the return of Jesus. So may we see more miracles. So if you need a miracle today, get hands laid on and get prayer. Thank you. God bless you. See you next week. Church Online UK, thank you so much for joining us for Summit Sunday. We really hope it's been powerful for you today as we have talked all things to do with leadership. Now, I don't know if you've discounted yourself at all today and thought, you know, I'm not a leader, so this doesn't really uh, count towards my thinking how I lead my life. But we believe leadership is about influence. If you have influence of your spouse, your friends, your family, anyone, then you are a leader and in the bible it talks about servanthood and empowering people and this is how i frame leadership in my mind and i want you to get excited about it as well gls will be online and i will post more details about that as they come out right now we would like to take some opportunity to pray for you if you ever need if you want blessing then request prayer and we will send you a video in response now i want to encourage you no prayer is too lowly no prayer is too big Uh, you can't ask for prayer enough here we are geared to pray for you so fill in that form and we will send you a video prayer in response we have a couple of events coming up we have the online group which is on the 12th of september and our newly launched bible study follow that verse which will be happening every single uh, last friday of the month at 8 p.m now if you're looking for community connection ways to get to know people online for someone to pray over you regularly these are the things that you need to attend to to be known to be loved and i also want to challenge you that maybe you're on the fringes that you feel like you can't connect that you can't be loved there is no value for you because people don't want to love you come along to these events and throw yourself in be known and we can connect and include you in our family here at Churchline. Thanks so much for joining us today. We will see you again soon. Bye.